But what if I moved into three dimensions and my middle red block, instead of being a simple square, was instead this trapezoidal shape. And instead of just having a simple linear dimensional tolerance on them, I had an orientation tolerance on this blue block or a form tolerance on this green block over here. It'd be much harder for me to simply uh, add those up in a PowerPoint and show you what the result would be. So if I hop into um, a 1D worst case versus a 3D worst case, the shortcomings of a 1D worst case, and when I talk about a 1D stack here, I'm simply talking about the three block demonstration that I gave earlier. A simple linear dimensions that add up to equal something else. And so in that case, I'm assuming that all my tolerances have a one-to-one -one effect on measure. I'm ignoring any geometric effect that my geometry has on my measured location. Um, additionally, it's going to be hard for me to capture angular variation using a 1D stack because, as I just said, we're looking at only linear dimensions when we talk about a 1D worst case stack. Um, we're also limited in scope because we can only look at the problem in one dimensions. This problem could be in two dimensions or all three dimensions, but in using a 1D stack, we can only look at it in one dimension. With a 3D simulation, we can capture the geometric effect and we can capture the angular variation. However, as I just mentioned before, doing one of these by hand is going to require me to do some rigorous hand calculations. And also, along the way, there's a large possibility for human error as I'm trying to get my vector directions correct and figure out where my geometry is going to have the largest effect on my measured location. Luckily, in this case, 3DCS can help us get to an answer. And now, as an example of a 1D stack versus a 3D stack, my colleague Gary Bell has created a simple demonstration of what can happen. So we have two buddies here. Our buddy on our left is a 1D stack. All of his blocks move up and down equally with that same linear dimension, just like my first 1D stack did in my PowerPoint, my blue, red, and green stack. My guy on my right here has orientation tolerance, essentially form tolerance on all of his points. Each of his points can move independently of each other. So when my buddy on my right here is built, He's moving to surfaces that have been deviated from their just perfectly up-down direction. So if I now want to build my guys and I click deviate, we can see that my buddy on my left here, he's simply moving up and down. Unfortunately, my guy on my right, while still all staying in one piece because those moves are moving him together, He's moving all over the place because he's moving to points that are individually deviated, such as an orientation tolerance or a form tolerance, whereas on the left here, he's only moving to linear size. Is that an apt description of these, this, uh, this model to you, Gary? It is. And uh, if any of you guys uh, have been with DCS for a long, long time, <laughs> this model was created in uh, 3DCS um, multi-CAD back before we even had solid data available. So it's just points and lines. But does a good job showing that, you know, worst case on the right-hand side, you're not sure in which position the worst case yes. is going to be because yeah. it's not as, you know, um, clear. And with so many blocks in this model, we have, I think, 11 blocks on each side. That would be a lot of possibilities to draw out by hand a lot of different directions that this guy could possibly go in. With this guy, it wouldn't be terribly hard for me to just add up all of them and figure out what the worst case height and worst case shortness my friend on my left could be here. But the guy on the right, it's very difficult for me to tell his height, first of all, but also if we wanted to find out how far in the y direction or how far in the x direction you get away, um, we're looking at a lot of different possibilities. And when you combine all those, it can get a little bit difficult, and I don't really want to imagine trying to do that without the help of some software like 3DCS.